So we'll examine the elbow joint now. The first thing we need to do is expose the patient, and, and really, ideally, we need to see the whole of the arm. So would you mind just taking your shirt off for us, please? Already we can see that he's moving his, his elbow well. He's not having any obvious difficulty with it at all. Now, first thing we need to do then is inspection. So just put your arms down like that for me. So we notice that he's got a normal carrying angle of about 10 degrees on the right side, uh, the same as on the left side. Uh, there's no obvious uh, wasting of his biceps. There's no obvious scars around the front of his elbow. And uh, the colour is normal. That's fine. And then I'll look from the side now. So just bend your arm to 90 degrees. Again, uh, normal contour, no obvious wasting, no scars, no obvious effusion, which we'd tend to see as a bulge around here. And then looking from the inside, very important to check around the medial epicondyle for any scars of ulnar nerve surgery. And, and that looks fine. And then if you just lift your arms up like that for me, and it's a nice easy way of looking at the back of the elbow. A bit of hard skin as is normal. Uh, but there's no bursi, uh, there's no nodules, no psoriasis, uh, and no scars uh, from previous olecranon surgery. Good, that's fine. So now we need to move on to palpation. Uh, subcutaneous joint, so we can have a, a feel of temperature. Um, if there's any concerns, check with the other side. And uh, an effusion tends to be felt as a bit of a boggy swelling uh, just uh, behind the radial head. There's no effusion palpable. And then we really need to go around and palpate individual structures uh, with one or two fingers only. So uh, on the lateral side, we've got the lateral epicondyle, the lateral supracondylar ridge, which is non-tender. Distal to lateral epicondyle, we've got the radio capitella joint, which is non-tender. And I can feel the radial head moving against my thumb and is non-tender. And uh, just anterior to that, we can feel the common flex at origin and there's no tenderness suggestive of tennis elbow. Coming round to the back, we've got the olecranon, which is non-tender. And then on the medial side, we've got the medial epicondyle, medial supracondylar ridge, and then the medial ligament, that's all non-tender. Can't feel the medial joint line. All the nerve is palpable, and is not thickened, and is non-tender and does not sublux with elbow flexion. Coming down to the front, we've got the common flexor origin, non-tender. The biceps tendon is intact and is non-tender. So that's palpation. Now moving on to movements. Uh, there's not many movements that we need to worry about around the elbow. Uh, flexion extension, pronation, supination. So I find uh, flexion extension is easiest with the arms out to the side. So if you just do that for me, sir. Palms faced up. And he has uh, just got full flexion, uh, sorry, full extension of his right elbow. And now touch your shoulders for me. And flexion of about 140 degrees. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about passive flexion unless there's any restriction, so that looks fine. Now put your arms at the side and uh, turn your palms face up. So supination there. Feeling the ulnar and radial styloid is about, is about 85 degrees, and palms face down. And similarly, pronation's around about, that's about 90 degrees actually. That's fine, so that's all the movements done. Now we just need to check the stability of the elbow. Stability needs to be checked with the elbow in 30 degrees of flexion. If you do it in full extension, the olecranon locks into the olecranon fossa and you uh, won't reveal any instability. To test the medial side then, so we have the elbow at 30 degrees of flexion, we need to maximally externally rotate the shoulder and then apply a gentle valgus stress, watching the patient's face and there is no opening up there and uh, the patient is not in pain. And then for the lateral side, we need to fully internally rotate the shoulder and then apply a varus stress. And again, there's a firm end point and no obvious pain. Now we need to move on and just check the uh, neurology. Particularly around the elbow, we're very concerned about the ulnar nerve. So we've already palpated it. I'm going to just do a Tinell's test. Does that cause any pins and needles in your fingers anywhere? No. So Tinell's test for the ulnar nerve is negative. Just looking at his hands. He's got no wasting of his hypothenar eminence. The skin of his little finger is the same as on the other side. Any difference in the feeling between the two sides? No. Okay. He's got no clawing of the, the hand. Spread your fingers out wide. Keep your fingers out wide. That's good. Good power. Turn your hands over that way. 
and there's no guttering uh, of the uh, interossei. A uh, quick screen of the other nerves, so his median nerve, any numbness there? No. Nope. And there? No. Nope. Is that okay? Can you make a circle like that? Pinch that hard? So his median nerve, his anterior interosseous nerve is intact, and uh, bend your wrist back up like that, and his radial nerve is similarly intact uh, with no numbness. Finally, check his pulse. That's fine. Rest that down. Good pulse. And uh, as with anything, always consider the joint above. So think about examining his shoulder. Uh, that could be a source of elbow pain. Uh, think about examining his brachial plexus as well, as that can cause pain uh, in the elbow. Okay, that's great. So let's now move on to some more of the uh, advanced techniques for the elbow. Uh, and for help with that, I've got Miss Edwards, uh, one of our upper limb consultants here. Uh, so Alison, if you could just uh, perhaps talk about any variations on exam technique uh, that you used in the past uh, with respect to the elbow. Yes. There are obviously a number of different ways to test all sorts of things uh, around joints. When looking at pronation and supination in the forearm, I found it most helpful to have uh, two writing implements and to ask the patient to put them in their hands, holding them with their thumbs. To tuck your elbows in by your side, put your palms flat upwards, and then palms flat downwards. It's very easy then to see if there's symmetrical movement uh, of the forearms and whether they've got full pronation and supination uh, by the direction in which uh, the pen's point. Testing other muscles around the elbow, it's particularly important uh, to test the biceps insertion. Uh, it's a commonly missed injury and usually uh, the biceps can be palpated in the antecubital fossa with the thumb or the fingers. And if you ask an individual to rotate their forearm, disappears on pronation and the tendon comes back with supination. And you can also see the movement of the biceps muscle in the upper arm. Testing triceps, one needs to uh, get rid of the effect of gravity and so really you need to abduct the arm out to the side and ask them then to extend their elbow so that their triceps is working against gravity because with the arm forwards gravity itself will extend the elbow and so one can uh, miss an injury to the triceps. Other tests which can be performed to check for medial and lateral epicondylitis, uh, placing stress on the muscle group involved. So with the arm extended forwards, flexing the wrist down will create additional force across the common extensor uh, origin and will produce pain around the lateral epicondyle. Similarly, if uh, one gets an individual to then try to supinate their forearm, so you try and turn your hand flat outwards, that will press, uh, place further stress on those muscles. Hold your fingers out straight for me. Pressing down on the, uh, the middle or the ring finger is a commonly used test, but uh, this may not be very specific uh, uh, to distinguish between lateral epicondylitis and radial tunnel syndrome. In terms of medial epicondylitis, obviously, palpation around the medial epicondyle and common flexor origin and then with the uh, elbow extended then extending the wrist will provide further stress across these muscles and ask them to do that against resistance or ask them then to pronate the forearm against resistance may produce pain again on the common flexor origin. We're now going to do a little bit of testing for elbow instability. Elbow instability is not a common problem uh, as elbow stiffness more commonly occurs after elbow dislocations. But more complex dislocations can lead to instability. Posterolateral lateral instability is the most common form of instability and this is where the radial head dislocates posterolaterally. laterally. Uh, a relatively simple screening test for this is to ask a patient to sit down in a chair with arms, to place their hands on the arms of the chair and then push themselves out of the chair Good. Stand up for me. That places the elbow in a position and produces the force that if they have el posterolateral elbow instability, their radial head is likely to sublux out 
posteriorly and they do not trust their elbow in order to perform that manoeuvre. Thanks. So that concludes the elbow. Uh, as you'll see, it's quite a uh, much more simple joint than other joints. So uh, if you get that in the exam, then I think you can uh, probably breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs>